Hello everyone, welcome back to the Great Elf Podcast, and I am very happy to, to, to really, I'm just, I'm just over the moon really, because we're welcoming back today a familiar face, someone who hasn't been on the channel in, I want to say, almost two years, but yeah, you're, you're finally getting back, and it's great to have you here, Calm. Oh, thank you, <laughs> it, it, it's been a long time coming, and uh, I enjoyed it so much last time, and now we've got a... Uh, a podcast this time. Yeah, you finally made it to the to the main main series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, you've been telling me uh, we're gonna have some interesting discussions about what the MonsterVerse was it? Yeah, quite a few, including the MonsterVerse, and I think it'd just be fun to have some have a good time talking about movies because yeah, movies. again, fun, kind of funny story here. This when I first made Grey Owl, the intention always was just just talk about movies. Yeah. I, I didn't intend to do a review series. I didn't intend to do a movie commentary series, but these these ideas just sprung up, and it's just nice to know that they've they've gone somewhere. Yeah, and I'm equally happy to know that I've been, I've been able to get my friends involved, and they've enjoyed doing it too. So, so I I want to thank you again for taking part in the channel when you first debuted, and I'd especially have to thank you for coming back. Ah, uh, Kobe, you give me too much uh, praise. Uh, all the all the work. Uh, Generally, that, yeah, we do contribute a little bit, but you put in the time. It's all good, man. <laughs> thanks, thanks, mate. <laughs> but yeah, so I think, I think it'd be fun to get straight into this one now. So, yeah, back for the seventh instalment, and we'll be kicking off, of course, with Kaiju. Kaiju. So, have you seen the MonsterVerse films? Uh, do you mean Godzilla? Yes. Per chance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen uh, a couple of Godzilla movies. Uh, do have to say, not particularly interested in the uh, classics, to be honest. The American versions weren't as good as a, a Japanese version that I watched, but that was a while ago. But the recent Godzilla... Well, I say recent. Godzilla King of Monsters. Yeah, it was the stuff... I want to say the third film in the in the in the MonsterVerse series because they they rebooted it with Godzilla in 2014 and then we had Kong and then we have King of the Monsters. Yeah. So you, so you've seen the first one and King of the Monsters. Yeah. So have you have you seen Kong Skull Island? Kong Skull Island, yes, the one with the uh, skull crawlers. Yeah. Yes. Ah, oh, that was a good one. It was it was so fun. I was I was really concerned when they announced that movie because I loved you know Peter Jackson's King Kong. And I kind, of, I kind of feel like I felt at the time that would the studio be able to pull off another Kong movie, especially when it's just so easy to see to make you know, monster movies just be very dumb and you know cash grabs like the one they did with The Rock. And I'm not complaining about The Rock because he's a good guy. He does he does does good with his roles and he clearly brings in an audience. But oh, that film Rampage. Yeah, yeah that's it. I haven't, I haven't seen that one. But... I haven't seen it either. To be honest, I've been putting that off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was I wasn't really bothered by it because again that's kind of what I thought Kong Skull Island was gonna be yeah. just minus CG action and it's just you're just there because of the star, but for the most part I enjoyed Skull Island and it definitely gave me enthusiasm to see where the series was gonna go and it didn't disappoint for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> so you've, you've you've got an idea of what the series is then? Yeah, generally. I tell you what though, uh, King Kong. Uh, one that has a uh, Jack Black in it. Oh yeah, I, I, I quite like that one as well. To be honest, it's nothing that quite uh, gets gets me excited when you've got a bunch of T Rexes fighting a gorilla. Oh god, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> god damn it! Thank you, Jackson. You gave us the Rings trilogy. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> questionable about the Hobbit, but god damn it, you, get, you, you gave us King Kong at least. <laughs> uh, yeah. After when I saw like the older. Godzilla's such I don't know, the Titan movies didn't really uh well the Monsterverse movies didn't really call to me up until like Godzilla, King of Monsters, where I saw G Godzilla like fighting huge huge nasties in very good quality. <laughs> quality helps. Yeah, I, I think the, the 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 strength of Godzilla, the, the twenty fourteen film was it was a very realistic take on Kaiju essentially. Yeah. And it, it Honestly, that's a double-edged sword because the whole nature of kaiju was that they are quite silly. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, and there's the girls barking again. Sorry about that audio. <laughs> but I don't get used to that at this point. 
Yeah, kaiju films, they're, they're going to be a hit or miss sometimes because yeah. they can be quite silly and depending on your interest at the time, you might want, want something that's more serious. And I haven't seen a lot. I've seen a few of the classics, but they they all sort of in the same camp where, again, you've got some very serious stories and very serious takes on you know Godzilla being a force of nature. You've got him being an allegory for the Hiroshima bombs. Yes. But then you've got ones where they're, they're all about befriending children and, and and you've got like Gamera chasing your kids in a submarine for, for a race. It's like, okay. okay. <laughs> that, that, that happened. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think that they can be great films. And I think, if anything, for at least the Western audience, the, mod, the, the Monsterverse has proven that there's a, there's a taste for it. Yeah. So yeah, there has been some news regarding the next step for the MonsterVerse because have you, you haven't seen King of the Monsters? No, 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 scratch that. I, I've seen King of the Monsters. I haven't seen uh, Kong versus Godzilla or Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, though I have uh, like I generally knows I generally know what happens. Like, uh, sorry, yes, spoilers <laughs> for those that haven't seen it yet. Kong gets brought to the big city. After Godzilla's, you know, rawr, rawr. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some reason I'm going crazy now. Uh, so they um, they have a little little fight, you know, fist off, fist off, flying, breath lasers, and then for some reason uh, Godzilla's now got a weapon with uh, Godzilla's scale. It's Kong. Kong has got <laughs> Kong has got a uh, weapon with uh, Godzilla's scale, and yeah. The antagonists create uh, Mecha Godzilla, and I know that Godzilla and Kong put their differences aside, and wham, <laughs> defeat uh, <laughs> Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> that is that, that's that's a decent summary, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what happened with King of the Mo- with God- King of the Monsters. God damn it, it's Godzilla versus Kong. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's what happened in the last film. Yeah, and since then there's been a sort of a flux at the moment with the MonsterVerse because a lot of people were wondering if that was meant to be the final film, and I I guess probably in an alternative universe had the film been done if if it had been received poorly it probably would have been, but yeah. it became very popular and I'm happy to say that people really liked the film. I didn't like all of it, but I generally enjoyed watching it, and I can definitely say I would love to see more of the series, and. We found out in April that Legendary, the company behind the films, they've reported that they began taking steps to move forward with future films. So that's promising. It's nice to know that we've got, hopefully, something coming in the future. Yeah. And we also found out that Adam Wingard, who is the director for Godzilla vs. Kong, he said he's in talks. As I think it's the rumour, but the, the idea is that he has, he's been in talks to talk about directing another instalment. And also available at the time was that there are various film titles being considered. And the most prominent one is Son of Kong. Son of Kong. Back on Skull Island, uh, the Skullcrawlers being the natural enemy of Kong. Uh, so he lost his family. But then um, what you brought up was a hollow earth theory where they uh, found another world inside of Earth. Yeah, they tease they tease the existence of the possible or the possibility of Hollow Earth throughout the films, and it's revealed in Godzilla vs Kong that they found it. And the idea that people have at the moment, at least the, the general idea that what they will do if this is the story that's going forward with the next with the next instalment, is that Kong could possibly find another member of his species there, and that would make sense. I I, I do wonder how that that story would go, and. We know, well, I know at least, I know that past kaiju films have explored the idea of Kong having a son, like Kong Kong Jr. or something. Kong Jr. <laughs> so there's definitely a template that, 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 you know, Western audiences can borrow from the from the from from Japan. So it could be interesting. Um, i got to say, though, if that is what they do, kind of surprising, because when I, when I heard that, when I saw, you know, the latest film, I kind of thought that they would have to do a, a few more films, like a, a few more solo films before they even considered giving Kong a family. Because mm. I kind of had the idea that he'd have to have a second film, and that could be him exploring the Hollow Earth. He would, yeah. if, if we could, he could encounter some new antagonists, maybe that counter his own, or maybe even antagonists like him, you know, yin and yang. And then that film would end with him at meeting a mate or finding another member of his species, and then that would lead the third film to do you know, the, the generational thing. 
But if this is if this is what they're going to do, then I, I'm curious to see how that will be treated because. Yeah. I don't know, I guess I, I'm just so used to trilogy structures where you've got to have the first act, the second act, the third act in films. I do feel like having giving Kong a family and a son, or like a child in general, that's more something reserved for the end of their journey, whether it's with the second journey. I mean, unless they're going to have the son take over the mantle in the third film, but hmm. yeah, you never know. I like the idea of that, actually, to be honest. They should definitely do uh, work more onto the law hmm. of that. Like, uh, King Kong but how they're going to do it I don't know do you think they'll make a prequel I don't know there, there was talks a while ago that apparently one well, of the execs I think were considering a possible film set in the past so there could be a film where there's no humans whatsoever which I would, wouldn't mind seeing cause that would be a very good idea as well yeah because it, def- it definitely gives the monsters the official highlight and let's be honest the, the human stories I mean aside from most of the first film the human stories have been a bit hit or miss for a lot of people, yeah. myself included. So giving a, a monster-verse movie entirely to the monsters would be a nice change-up. Yeah. yeah. You see how they uh, coexisted in the past, like, without any human influence and mm. all that. And you could probably see if uh, King Ghidorah, or Ghidorah, or however you people would uh, <laughs> mention it, um... See if he had uh, any runnings with Kong himself. Maybe, maybe, maybe Kong, oh, Kong, maybe um, Ghidorah for God, Godzilla's ancestors. I mean, who's to say we can't see? Probably. Yeah, we couldn't see the origin story of Godzilla. Yeah. I mean, that would be quite interesting because I, I know that I think the idea. Again, I'm thinking this off the top of my head, off the top of my head. I think Godzilla is meant to have been around for a long time. Hmm. So that, so I guess the idea could be that maybe he we would see his first encounter with God Ghidorah, but that would be mostly be treading ground that we saw in King of the Monsters. So if they want if they want to change it up, it could be this is Kong, this is Godzilla's parents, and you see them you know go through an adventure fighting other rivals and factions and alphas to keep their title of the kings. And then you can maybe end the film in a final battle with God Ghidorah and you end end with Godzilla still around, ready to mm. go on for his 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 journey. Of becoming the new king of the king of the world. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think closing off the Godzilla side of it, I will say I really hope we get to see another Godzilla film. Yes, yes, me too. Yeah, uh, I think he needs that final act instalment in his trilogy. Yeah, because we've had two decent. Well, the first one I think is very good. I, th- I still th- I still think they should have kept Brian Cranston around. Yeah, <laughs> but I think it's a, def- a definitely strong first entry. The second one is more action-packed, more enjoyable to watch, even though I will admit the, the humans didn't completely grab me. Yeah. But I enjoyed his films, and I really loved what they did with him in Godzilla vs. Kong. So I would definitely be down for another solo outing with Godzilla, even if it is just to wrap his story up. Yeah. Because when you think about it, there are so many monsters that were created from this genre that you could easily make films about them and they could continue the story. It's sort of like the Marvel Cinematic Universe where you do have multiple characters leading the story. It's not just Iron Man's story. It's not just Captain America's story. So they could definitely do, you know, if they wanted to, they could put Godzilla to rest after King of the Monsters and have new characters come in that could lead the story. Hmm. But I do feel like Godzilla is owed a final outing. And whether that's him fighting... Mecha, Mecha King Ghidorah, or if it's him fighting Destroyer, or, or maybe like Space Space Godzilla. Yeah. I mean, th- there's plenty of you know top top antagonists that you could bring in for another Godzilla film that can be the end game for him. Yeah. So I hope they consider that. I hope that we do get another installment because I think it'd be fun. To be honest, uh, that there's a lot of potential with uh, what Godzilla can do. Like. To be honest, I'm I'm willing to go all the, all the way as to say like uh, do films on the other Titans as well. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I know there's Godzilla, there's Kong, but like there was like a Mammoth Titan, there was a Spider Titan, and all that. There was Rodan. Uh, yeah, he's still around. So I mean, I don't, I don't follow any of the you know the outside promotional stuff, so I don't know if they might have said that he got killed or something in, in between movies, but I doubt that. Yeah. I mean, fans love these characters for a reason, so it'd be quite 
stupid of them to kill off any favourite characters off screen. But they could definitely do a Rodan movie. Because, yeah. again, there's been Rodan movies in the past. And I do think there's definitely something worth exploring in that character beyond what we saw in King of the Monsters. Hmm. I'm invested, so... <laughs> Definitely. Show, show me more. <laughs> and that's what's important. You're invested. So there's an interest for it. So Universal or Legendary or whatever, who, whoever's got the rights right now and is making these movies, you've got something here. So don't chuck it away. <laughs> Feed my gluttonous appetite. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, that's Monsterverse. So moving on, we'll get to some additional movie news. So Indiana Jones 5. It's been God knows how long <laughs> since the last film. I want to say 2008. 2008. That is it's over over a goddamn decade here. <laughs> but yeah, so they we've we finally announced what well, we finally found out. I think I think it was last year they announced it, but this year they finally began filming production. I think it was around May or June or whatever. But they they started filming it officially this year. So any other day. If I want to say no, because I, I don't think any other day in an alternative universe, if Disney had done the Star Wars sequel trilogy right, mm. I would be over the moon excited for this movie. But again, people who listen who probably if, if, if you've either followed the channel for a while or if you've seen the previous podcast I did with <laughs> with Hawk, you'll know I'm not a fan of the Disney trilogy. I have my reasons. Yeah. I'm, I'm not looking forward to this movie. Uh, which is a shame because I love Harrison Ford. He's such a great actor. And the character of Indiana Jones has been such a fun character to watch. Yeah. Again, people will question the fourth film because it, that's the one that introduces aliens. And yeah. I, I don't know. I, I remember watching it a lot when I was younger and enjoying it. I wasn't really that fussed about it. If I watch it again now, I might rethink that. But I definitely... I've seen Rays of the Lost Ark recently and... Yeah, I can say that that's definitely one of the strongest films in the series, and I love the entire trilogy as a whole. I think my brother prefers the third one, and I can see why. It's, I think it's got quite a fun adventure to it. And I think the, the dynamic between Indy and his father is such a relatable thing that it's it makes the story more impactful and interesting and fun. But doing a, doing this film, I want to I want to get excited because there was I think you might know bits of this. Some leaks came out earlier in the year during when, when production was beginning and before Harrison Ford broke his leg I think Whoa. <laughs> or, or was his arm yeah, I think it was he, he broke his arm when he was training or something or he, he hurt his arm but the point is he, he had to go to hospital for a few days or something Ooh. and he's he's still on off leave I believe yeah I mean between when we released this and when we're recording right now he might have gone out of hospital or, or get back to filming but will he, he will he be able to Swing that lasso again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you'll manage. <laughs> Sorry, back to the rumors. The rumors came out about the possible plot of the movie and premise. One title apparently really revealed at the time was that the film was going to be called Indiana Jones and the Empire of Evil. And I heard, I believe they debunked, they debunked that. So, which is that's good, I guess, because I don't I don't know how to, I don't know how to feel about that title. The Empires of Evil. Yeah, I feel like it would have to be more... I mean, Indiana Jones has always been about the MacGuffin, and I feel like it would have to be about the MacGuffin. Whatever that MacGuffin is, we'll yeah. see. But um, of the of the rumours, well, I guess the background explanation of it was that it was going to be set during the, the space run for the travel to the moon. Travel and, to the moon. Yeah, people were concerned at the time that Indy was actually going to go to the moon. <laughs> but they, I think they came out saying that that's not going to happen. Thank God, because I mean, it's bad enough you made him meet, meet aliens. I don't think we need Indiana Jones in space. <laughs> Indiana Jones goes to Saturn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got Star Wars for that. If you want to go to space, use Star Wars. <laughs> Indiana Jones in the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh. But yeah, um, yeah, that was debunked, thankfully. But um, among the other rumours of the plot, some of them was that Mads Mikkelsen's character, who's who, who the actor's been converted to playing the villain of the film. He was apparently going to be playing a Nazi, which I can see. He can, he can be quite a menacing figure when he plays villain roles. I mean, you have to just watch Hannibal yeah. and see that. Oh, it's that uh, Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, the TV yeah. series. 
it's not the TV series I'm thinking of. I think I think it, I'm thinking of. Have uh, you seen Silence of the Lamb? Silence of the Lamb, no. Oh, you haven't? No, uh, I, I'm a very sheltered boy. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> no, you, you just got you just you just got a lot to look forward to then. All right, cool. So Silence of the Lamb and Hannibal. Yeah, the series because the, 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 there are some other films I haven't I haven't seen. Hannibal the film I've in seen, a few years but I know that's yeah. not the best I think Red Dragon is another film I haven't seen that actually I would love to actually because I've heard good things about it I need to take notes of what films I should be watching <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't worry mate there's so much to enjoy that's good actually yeah I like a lot of the shit we've gotten in the last few years <laughs> but yeah um, point is watch Hannibal watch Science of the Lamb they're good films and to take away from all that Max Mikkelsen is good at playing villains, so I can definitely see him playing a villain in Indiana Jones. Yeah, I look forward to it. Hmm. But and um, and among the other rumors is that the film would was going to have the the Bell de Glocker as a as the MacGuffin of the movie. Have you heard about de Glocker? De Glocker, no. De Glocker. I've, I I mostly know it from because there was an, there was an, there was an episode about de Glocker in the YouTube series Bedtime Stories. I'll leave it a link. But, yeah, it's basically just a Nazi super weapon, a wonder weapon. And the idea was that it was used to... Yeah, they used it on test subjects to see if it would have any effect on them. And they got killed and they died because of it. And apparently it also involved time travel. Again, these are all... This isn't... This isn't... This isn't all... I'm trying to think, think of how to describe it. But it's basically just a weapon that the Nazis tried to use... And they didn't use it because, again, they got beat. <laughs> <laughs> but if that was the premise of the the idea of what the leaks were, is that it was going to be about Indiana Jones, once again fighting Nazis, trying to get his hands on or even to prevent the Nazis from using the Bell de Glocker. And it was going to be set in the 50s. And considering this was meant to be the final film, I'm assuming, with Indiana Jones, it's either going to retire him and they're going to introduce another character to take on the mantle if they do continue to do films or the more likely one which I'm dreading is that they're going to kill him off uh, yeah so oh, what's, your, what, what's your thoughts on that sounds like a very interesting premise actually that involved a worker that generally when it comes to like uh, films like them you need a solid villain mm. and uh, that theory that you've come up with uh, or, sorry, I didn't mean to say come up with, that you've um, studied. It's, it's a rumour that, that the majority of now, well, I, again, I believe it's been debunked now, so it's not, it's, it's been confirmed it's not going to be the plot of the movie. Yeah. But, I'm not going to lie, that does sound like a promising Indiana Jones premise. It does, it does. It's like, if they make it sort of, I say, sort of similar to uh, Hydra in the uh, Captain America hmm. film, I could get behind that because uh, like Hydra, they were a uh, very convincing uh, villain group, but they were also Nazis. Mm. And uh, to be honest, I'm getting really excited. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they do that because uh, it'd be interesting to see how um, Indiana Jones would uh, go about like, stopping that. I'm sorry, I, I can't remember the name of the uh, the the what? The Glocker. The Glocker. What a name. <laughs> that sounds quite cool too. <laughs> yeah, but before that uh, film comes out, I'm gonna I'm gonna study up. I need to watch the uh, other four, other four films to uh, uh, refresh. Give give myself a good old. Uh, we should do a marathon. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> just have a marathon of all. Get get the gang together. Just watch the watch the four all four films and then lead up to the fifth one. Oh yeah. Not gonna lie, I. I do, I do love Indiana Jones, and I, I want I want to look forward to this film, but I just I just I just had that voice in the back of my head reminding me that this is the same people that made Star Wars, the new the new Star Wars films, and I'm, I'm so it's going to have the it's probably going to have the same sort of influence. Yeah, I mean it's the last film believe I believe being produced by Kathleen Kennedy. I, I don't know if she's going to be if she's leaving this year or next year or if she's being renewed. I don't know. I don't follow that stuff a lot right now, but. I just know that she's been. She was heavily involved in Star Wars and how it suffered because of that. Yeah, and yeah. I'm concerned that she's again, again, she has her good, her good intents and good reasons, I guess. But it, the final products, the final products have not shown good, and 
I'm concerned that for the final outing with Indiana Jones, which could be good, I feel like it's going to be squandered because of identity politics, agendas, and again, they have their reasons, but I feel like sometimes you don't need to do all of that stuff in, in yeah. films. Well, not in films in general, but they just you just need a fun adventure film, and I feel like they're possibly going to ruin that if they do this film. I think, and I think the other thing is just if they kill a Indy, because I don't want him to him to die. Oh. I mean, if I if if I was given the reins of the, the last indie film ever, you know what I would do? I would just close it off with him in his elderly age. He's living in his home. He's still got his wife, or he's maybe it's a few years after she's passed away. But he's got a lot. He's had a life with her. He has his kids. Maybe he's got some grandkids so they don't have to bring back Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do wonder if they'll bring him back at all. <laughs> but yeah, I would just close the series off with the final shot of the movie being Indy on his porch with his dog, with his new dog. Because <laughs> he, he hasn't had a dog when he was younger, which inspired his name. But I would have him... The series end with him in his senile years with his grandkids and his grandkids, his grandkids go off to have an adventure. Maybe he maybe gives the hat to his daughter or his son hmm. or, or sorry, grandson or grandchild, and yeah, I just it would just that would be his ending because he, he had a he had some fun adventures. He evaded death many times, but in the end, he lived a life and he enjoyed it and he he saved lives and he brought great things to the archaeology archaeological archaeological world. Hmm. And yeah, that's his story. I think that would be a very decent, very moving ending as opposed to bam, he's dead. Okay, you, random person who's been introduced in this film, you're indie now. So that wouldn't be fun. No. And it also wouldn't help if, the, if again, if, again, continue the, the Star Wars tradition of Rey where they're good at everything. If they just out excel at everything, it's not fun, it's not interesting. Because, god damn it, the amount of shit Indy goes through in his entire film series, I want to believe that whoever, if they do, again, if they do the passing over the torch thing, I want the new character to be equally vulnerable, equally durable, but also yeah. root for them. And I can root for Ray, so I hope that yeah, I hope in the end they do do a good job, but I have my doubts. Yeah, because Star Wars got completely ruined by the uh, what was it? What was her name? Uh, ah, Captain Candy. Yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I liked the first six. The first six films. Yeah, I liked them. I weren't a big follower. Of Star Wars, to be fair, but it doesn't take a genius to come to realize what happened in the other three films. Like, no, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. What? But uh, for Indiana Jones, if if they ruin it, they're gonna break hearts. So. Oh yeah. If anything, I think it will just prove more fans right that yeah, you guys clearly shouldn't have been done. To, done you shouldn't have been given the reins to Star Wars. You clearly done the same thing with Indy. Why should we bother coming back for more? So mm. I hope they prove us wrong. I hope they they are intent on making this a good film. And I hope that it's respectful to the characters. I hope it's expect, expect, expected respectful to the world. And I hope that they have an idea of what they want to do. And it's actually going to be enjoyable for the fans. I hope it's not going to be done just because, oh, we have this agenda. Let's do this because we can. Why, why not care about that? All that jazz. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah. Fingers. I'll, I'll cross my fingers. But. Again, I know, I know, I've seen what's happened before. We'll see, I guess. Yeah, I guess. So, I hear there's a uh, a pirate running around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> transition. <laughs> but yeah, this is a this is an interesting one because um this is this actually wasn't part of the discussion, but I thought I'd add it because it's a nice little callback and Easter egg for us. Yeah, because when we when I first invited you onto the channel, the plan was originally to do a podcast. Yes, and it was going to be about talking about the Pirates of the Caribbean film series in its entirety. Because at that time, I believe the seventh film had been released. I think it was like the year before or something. So it was quite quite, quite fresh in my mind, and yeah, the plan was to talk about that entirely, but that fell through sadly because of your busy schedules yeah. with work, yeah. and I had a lot of shit going on at the time too. Unfortunately. So I thought we'd just condense this into a small little bleep in this discussion. Yeah. So would you say you enjoy the pirate films? I'm quite a pirate fan. I, I do like a, a pirate film here and there. Though it has been a while since I've seen a Pirates of the Caribbean. It, any film that isn't anime. No, <laughs> it's been a while since I've uh, seen. I know that Johnny Depp 
by God, the man, he plays a good funky pirate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's so, there's so much to enjoy about the pirate films. Again, because like Indiana Jones, it was an adventure. It was something to be invested in, but have fun with. Yeah. And you loved the characters, you loved the story, and I think for for a tr- for a trilogy of films when it was originally just a trilogy, I think they were perfect. Mm. And I I loved them. I loved. I watched them a lot when I was younger, and I still have a soft spot for that for the memories, and the times I reenacted pirate scenes <laughs> in the beach. But yeah, so. Of course, Daddy, that's not how the story ends happily, because yeah. they made some sequels after that, and they've not been the best. I'm not going to I don't mind the fourth one. I, I have my problems with it, because I... I guess we'll get a bit of a detail here to talk about what I would have done. So, if I had been put in charge of parts of the Caribbean after the third film, mm-hmm. I would have envisioned an entirely new trilogy of story storylines. Because you've seen... Have you seen the fourth and fifth one? Uh... Fourth one, I believe so, yes. Uh, not seen the uh, latest one, okay. unfortunately. Yeah, so, yeah, for Fresher, it's the Fountain of Youth one with the fourth foot film. And for the fifth film, it's them fighting ghost pirates. But, yeah, in I, what I would have done is I would have kept most of the story for the fourth one. Yeah. But instead of just having a completely new cast, I would have, had, I would have introduced Will Turner's son. Because he's a character that is introduced in the fifth film. But he's he's very boring, <laughs> he's, and they they don't they do they do the stupid oh will they won't they even though they're arguing constantly in with him and another female character in the film, who's revealed to be Barbosa's daughter, <laughs> and again that's not a bad idea, but how they executed it in that film I I wasn't a fan, and yeah I think I feel like they could have done they could have started things off a bit more strongly if they starred the fourth film doing that so in the fourth film what I would have done differently is that I would have had I would have had in, Indy <laughs> I would have had Jack, Jack Sparrow encounter Will's son yeah and he would have taken him taken him on as his you know second mate maybe they could have had a bit of a misadventure where they were like oh um, I'm not going to take you on as my assistant you're you're, you're annoying or something <laughs> but they, they're, they're getting swooped up in the adventure with the you know the Fountain of Youth Maybe that can make them both enjoy each other's company. And it's like, you know what, kid? You're all right. Let's go on some adventures together. And one of the underlying threads of that film is that he's trying to find something that can help save his father. Because we find out in the fifth film that Will Turner is not freed from the curse, which was implied at the end of the third film. Which was, again, I think it was a big controversy at the time. I I don't know for sure, but I remember people thinking, like, why did you undo that? Because, yeah, great. we had quite a happy ending all things considered for the third film, and then like, oh, he's still cursed. <laughs> so yeah, I, if, if they had to stick to that, what I would have done was that I would have had the third film be his son trying to find the cure, and he thinks, maybe the Fountain of Youth can help my father free him from that curse somehow. It doesn't, of course, but he gains a friend in Jack, and they go off on further adventures, and then you get to the fifth film, they could have easily done... Maybe they didn't have to do Ghost Pirates, they could have done something different, but they could have maybe maybe had, maybe had them fight a sea monster... Because hmm. I really loved the Kraken. I would love to have seen another sea monster fight. Yeah. So well, we love kaijus after all. Kaijus, exactly. <laughs> Godzilla versus <laughs> Jack Sparrow. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I understand that Jack Sparrow like took on a Kraken, uh, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I've got a feeling God, against Godzilla. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, that's quite one sided, don't you think? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I would have maybe maybe make an original story, but I would have had a more of a, a, a recurring cast of characters to make the story a bit more fleshed out. I guess mm. again, I'm, I, I'm this is off the top of my head, so I'm not exactly on my A game like I was with um, Park versus the World. But I, I feel like there's there was definitely room that you could have explored with a few more films in the pirate film series, and I feel like they just didn't hit the mark really. Yeah. So, yeah, if they do make a, if they make another one, because again, there's been talks they might be doing another film, maybe with Johnny Depp, maybe without him. But who knows? If they make another one, I hope they can find a way to make it interesting and fun. But again, I also feel like they don't really need to make any more, because I'm quite happy with the the trilogy of films we've got. Yeah, and okay to think that maybe the fourth and fifth ones were just alternative universes or something. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, put, I'll, I'll probably put them in the same box as the sequel trilogy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're there. But I don't have to accept them as canon. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Next, next discussion point here. Getting quite into... Well, we're not getting into anime, but we are getting into anime adaptation. Uh, CGI or something like that. Yeah. Or... So have you seen the Pokemon movie Pikachu, Detective Pikachu? Detective Pikachu, no. No, I haven't. I know that uh, Ryan Reynolds uh, plays a massive part in that, and I've been so disappointed in myself not being able to watch it, because Ryan Reynolds be being one of my favourite... Uh, comedy uh, actors um, but from what I guess it's Pikachu uh, or no it's a nerd that finds Pikachu <laughs> in his house yeah. uh, and Pikachu is finally able to uh, like speak with someone and he hasn't been able to yeah so the premise is that we, we follow the, the human protagonist, who's called Tim. Tim. And he's basically, um, he's, 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 find out he's, he work, he's the son of a detective. Ah. And he finds out his father died. So he goes back home to collect his stuff, and he meets Pikachu, who was his father's Pokemon. And he finds out, surprisingly, that he can speak. He can understand him, whereas everyone else can't. And that's one of the mysteries of the film. Ah. So the premise is basically, what happened to my father? I need to figure out what's going on. Pikachu's going to help me. Because he's convenient enough, quite a detective himself, yeah. as the title suggests. So I would recommend you check it out. Definitely. It was, I, again, in my opinion, it has some faults, but I think it was a fun film that definitely kicked off a good start to a series if they want to do a series. But going into discussions today, sadly, it seems that we might not be getting a sequel. Oh. Because it was announced, I believe in July, that Netflix are moving forward with a television adaptation Pokemon, and it's going to be a completely original story, as far as we know. It's not going to be about anything related to Detective Pikachu, but it's going to be of the same vein, where we've got live-action characters interacting with animated characters, and yeah, maybe it's going to be the official live-action adaptation that fans have wanted for a while, which will be interesting, because I, I kind of, again, I mentioned this in the last Pokemon episode I did with Lynn. I would love them to do the next film as a full-on, you know, catch Pokemon adventure. Don't make it another detective story, because yeah. you've, you've done that with the first one. You don't need to do it again and risk, you know, doing a bit copy copycat. So, I guess, I guess is, we're going to get that in the end, I guess. It's just not, not film-wise. Not a film, film then. Yeah. Which I, I think would be good. I think if, giving them more hours to work with is definitely a good way to tell a story. But adding on to that... The actor who plays Tim, I think he announced in an interview around the same time or or recently or whatever, that it's unlikely they're going to be making another film because it, I think he said he said along the lines it might not happen. <laughs> I think that's the gist of it. He just mm. said it might not happen, but that's just the actor. Yeah. For all we know, he's just gone radio silent from the producers and he just hasn't heard anything from them, but maybe they are working on it still. Oh, didn't Detective Pikachu do pretty good? He did, yeah. Yeah. So instead of like... Maybe not doing it. Feed the fans what they want. Yeah. I mean, unless if they think the fans would much prefer a live action. But yeah, I think th it's good that we're getting more Pokemon live action because again, there's a first for it. Yeah, and I think they're giving us that in the TV series. But I also think it is a shame that we're not getting a direct. Well, not I say direct sequel because again, that's not what I don't want. But I do think it's a shame we're missing out on the film side of it. Mm. Because, again, there is an appeal to films. And despite how things are going on right now in the film industry, I think it's good that we have films. And I hope they're still around. <laughs> yes. And Because you, you, you can't have that experience on TV sometimes. No. I mean, as much as I love the experience I got from watching Game of Thrones, from watching Doctor Who during its early days, when it was actually good. <laughs> when there's just something about seeing a film in the cinemas... But yeah, um, there's just something about seeing a film that has that experience to it. And it, it, I think it is a shame that if they do confirm they're not doing an, another film with Pokemon, it would be a shame. Hmm. Well, generally, uh, with Pokemon, I've seen like a fair few films to do with Pokemon. Uh, I think my favourite one would 
probably have to be the one that involves um, maybe Entei. Pokemon, I think it was 3000. Hmm, okay. Uh, you, have you seen that one? No, I haven't seen a lot of the films. I've seen. I think the only one that comes to mind is I remember watching Lucario and the Mystery of the Missing Mew or the Living Tree or something. I just remember, I watched it recently actually. I oh, can't yeah. again. You kill me. I, hit, I forgot the title, but I remember watching it and really enjoying the premise of a Lucario being the center focus. And I think it was the film that introduced the, the Pokemon Lucario. Okay. But it was. I just remember enjoying it for its cool premise. And I've seen a few episodes of Journeys recently, and they were okay. I really love Score Bunny, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not. I'm not really experienced when it comes to the movies, animated wise. Fair enough. I mean, hopefully they knock it out of the park with this because live action. There's not been many uh, good live action films. Yeah, I think Pokemon Detective Pikachu escaped the curse of yeah. bad Pokemon. About bad animated movies or anime movies, because again, there's been so many recently. Like like Death Note. Have you seen that one? I've seen Death Note. Uh, oh. Not the. All right, I'm gonna a little confession of mine. Quite uh, disappointed I did this, but it was put on in front of me, so I just watched it anyways. I've seen the live action. I have not seen the series. Oh really? Yes. I guess that's good in a way because you, it, you, your, your spirit wasn't tarnished by seeing how shit they did with the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so in other words, again, you've got something to look forward to. <laughs> generally, generally so. Uh, though I do have to say, William Dafoe, that he did, he did an all right job considering. Yeah. I mean, compared for... to all the other people. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I, I would, I would definitely recommend him coming back if they, I mean, voicing the character alone would be great if they, if they want to, but. Yeah, I think definitely give Death Note a watch. You'll, it'll be much better. Yeah. But, yeah, f- anime films, not the best. And definitely not. No. It's nice to know that Pick a Pokemon escaped the curse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hope, again, saw the similar thing. Hope for the best with these developments with, with, with Pokemon. It's just a shame that we might not get a movie. But I hope we do. You never know. Hmm. So the last, last bit of movie news. Yeah, one. So, yeah. We found out recently that My Hero Academia will be getting its own live action adaptation. And they confirmed, I think they, they confirmed the director, I am going to butcher the name here, but it's called Shinziku Sato, I believe. He's a Japanese filmmaker and he's mostly been known, as far as I'm aware, for making adaptations. He's been notable, I guess, for making adaptations of Death Note and Bleach before. Yeah. And from what I've done research wise, they've done okay, but not good. So that kind of gives you an idea of what we might expect from this adaptation. But what's your what's your thoughts on my hero being adapted into a film, a live action film? Right. My Hero Academia, as we all know, is doing very well. It is also a very, very good anime in my opinion. Uh the way they've got uh, the different characters, uh, their own personalities, their own quirks, their own hero names and essentially just what they do they cannot mess this up mm. <laughs> i am a huge my hero fan uh well anime wise um i will be giving it a go uh, the live action um but generally like i think there's going to be a, a very sore spot if uh they don't do too well with this one they need they need to pick the right actors they need to come up with a Decent story. Mm. That they right. If they follow the law of uh, my hero, they have to stick with the law because I know that with uh, some live actions, they've uh, taken the law and twisted it in a way, which it's not what I'm looking for at yeah. all. And yeah, just look up, look at the Attack on Titan movies, for example. Mm. Don't twist the law. Mm. The the law is itself. Um, the law is the law. The, the, the law is the law. <laughs> uh, uh, but generally, I'm not too excited for um, the live action, but I am willing to give it a go. And if like, I could be just talking this down and it ended up being like the ultimate one shot film that mm. I absolutely love. Uh, so I'm going to give it a go. Uh, I know I'm talking down upon it quite a lot. 
but yeah. Needless to say, I'm not that excited, but we'll see what comes. Are you were uh, interested? Yeah, I'm. Generally, I'm not gonna lie. I I can see the faults, and I'm uh, I am a bit concerned too because again, the, the tradition at this point, anime adaptations are quite difficult to nail. Yes, and they can be done right, like Pokemon Detective Pikachu, but. My Hero is such a big story. It's hard to... Be, I mean, it's even hard to quite imagine where they'd cut off the story to end it for the first movie. And that's if they do end up doing good in getting sequels to tell the rest of the story. So I think if they... I think they should have taken your approach. If they are going to make this movie, they need to do an original story set in the world. So mm. it's, instead of just adapting it. Because again, you can't really change much with Todoroki. You can't change much with Bakugo. You can't change much with All Might. If you change those, that's impacting the rest of the series, the story in general. So I think the best thing to do would be to tell an original story. It just happens to be live action. And if that is popular, then go forward with that, because that, that could definitely be another income for the studios. And it's something that's refreshing for the fans, because I think the, mo- the, the recent animated movie came out recently, and I want to see that, but I'm going to hold off seeing season five. Well, we watched that after season five, mm. but yeah, that's I've heard that's been okay. So there's definitely an audience still for, to see movies for My Hero Academia. This is just going to be a different variation of it. So I, you just have to hope that they they have an interesting idea. Yeah, they need to uh, if they're going to do their own version of My Hero, but uh, they need to. Uh, but, <sighs> sorry. Yeah. Fans, what they need. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if they're going to do their own version of My Hero, they need to uh, like try and delve into a uh, part where fans will, once they've seen it, they won't realise that they've needed it. Hmm. If that's a good way of putting it, it's like take it by surprise. I reckon. Take me by surprise. Uh, I mean, I, I would love it if they maybe did this. Did the movie around All Might? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's a sto- an original story about All Might during his time in America. That could be interesting. That could be interesting. So there'll be uh, completely different characters as well. Yeah, uh, I mean that gives them more range to do something original as opposed to just let's tell the My Hero story, but with less time and we'll have to like rush half the development, which would be a shit thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> but if you tell an original story about All Might. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised they haven't done that for an animated movie yet. I think they did They did something similar with an OVA. I haven't seen all the OVAs yet, but I do know they, they did a bit of All Might's backstory I mean, and him going to America. But, yeah, that, that's definitely untapped potential there, and if they want to explore that with a movie, that could work. I'd like to see that, actually. Mm. I'd really like to see that. I guess we'll see. OVAs are good. OVAs <laughs> are good. They, they may not... Yeah. Some of them may not be a uh, canon or don't follow like anything what they're doing. It could just... OVAs, they're just uh, what's the word? They just they're side uh... side stories, like side quests. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> like people want uh, to see more of the anime, uh, but they don't know or they can't catch up on production as quick, so they put in filler. <laughs> Have a little bit of filler. <laughs> yeah, and expanding on certain material that might not be explored yep. in the main story. Yeah. I guess we'll see then. Yeah. So the next next subject. Have you seen any of the, any of the latest Marvel products? Any of the latest Marvel products? I haven't seen Black, Black Widow. Uh, I've seen it being advertised. And I'm very interested to give that a go. I, I kind of want Hawkeye to get his own uh, film as well. He is getting his own show this year. Show? I have to uh, delve into that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, uh, that might be out by December or end of this year, I think, is the goal. Yeah. But they might postpone it to next year, but they are filming it, so you're not going to wait, hopefully. Hmm. But yeah, so you haven't seen any of the recent shows or no. films? I've seen a very, very, very small bit of Loki, and that's it. Uh, I've also seen, like... I, I did a bad. I think I watched the last episode of uh, Captain America and the Falcon. Yeah. Didn't watch the entire episode. I watched like most of it. It was pretty good, to be fair. Yeah, yeah I'm not. Well, I, I 
they've been a bit hit and miss for me because I I didn't mind um, certain bits of the Falcon and Winter Soldier series, but I think the ending was. I'm not gonna. Lie, I feel like again, I don't want to get too much into it because it's very tied to real world politics. Yeah. And again, that's not something I like to talk about on this channel. But to exp- I guess to summarize it, I don't like it because it seems too as simple. I mean, the way that the way they resolve things and highlight certain people who've done very bad things, in my opinion, I feel like it's quite questionable to think, oh, that person, what they're why they're writing that way. I feel like it's it's very it's almost makes them look stupid yeah. because. If you, if you do you remember the scene where he's saying you've got to do better what in the Captain America uh, no I don't okay so, sorry for, for context in the at the end of the series spoilers um, Falcon becomes back Captain America and he, he basically reprimands the the government for their treatment of reacting to the snap from in game yeah and basically he says things like oh you can you've got supplies six months in advance that you can give out to people who need it. You can do all this other stuff. Why not do it? Do better. And you, from a surface level, you can understand that argument. But really, he's, his argument is just do better. Yeah. And it's like... So I can understand why you say that, but to be fair, for the government, they th- th- those contingencies exist for a reason. Mm. I mean, again, this, again someone said this... this I don't know who said this, but I remember, I remember just agreeing with them that those six months supplies they could be used for something important. What? Again, this is the thing why I don't like talking about it because it's it's much more serious discussions. Yeah. And this is not what I want to talk about. Yeah, fair enough. You're here to have fun. <laughs> yeah, but I, I just feel like the writing has been questionable yeah. because they're trying to reflect real world politics. And good, in, fair enough. They're trying to do it to highlight bad things, good things as well. But I think sometimes it can be very bad. It badly impacts the characters of the world because, again, the best example I can give is One Division, where they have a character. One Division. Have you seen One Division? One Division. No. Damn it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm uh, a very short child. I okay. only watch anime. <laughs> uh, I, I sort of want to explain this, but in short. Again, because I need to give context, but in short, she does some very questionable things that she should be held accountable for. But one of the main characters of the show, who you'd think, who worked for the government, who you'd think they would do their job, she just says, they'll never know what you sacrificed for them. And it's like, you do get that this person has done this and this and this, and yet you're not going to do anything to take her in, if, if she'd attempted to do that, if she'd attempted to do her job, at least apprehend her in a calm way, that would be more accepting and acceptable. But the fact that she just lets her go, yeah. Again, if you watch the show, you understand. Yeah. And, again, people can look at it differently, I guess, and because Wanda does suffer, so you can sort of make some justifications for some areas. But, honestly, I just feel like for a show that made her do so many questionable things, they let her off way too easy. Falcon and Winter Soldier is a bit, it's a bit more political, but I think that there were better ways and smarter ways to execute it outside of just, you've got to do better. And with Loki, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I, mostly, I quite enjoyed the show, but I just, I'll just say this, they're making season two, so I just hope they make it more about Loki, because I feel like it wasn't much of Loki, and he got hit so, he got beaten up so many times, I felt like, this is a guy who's fought the Avengers, and he did okay until the battle turned their tide. So I would like to see more of that instead of him just... Getting flung around and yeah. attacked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and who knows? Season 2 might be the gold gold standard next time. Or some, I don't know. It might be good. But so far, the products have not been up my alley, honestly. Yeah. And I back to Marvel Films. I haven't seen Black Widow yet. Hmm. Would really like to. Yeah, but I... Again, I've heard from what my friends tell me and from what I've... I'm not going to have been spoiled of on a few things. Some of it's just been, like, we didn't need this story. I would have preferred this story. Yeah. Again, people who've watched the movie, they'll know what I mean. For me, I, I guess I was expecting a more different story to be told with Black Widow's a solo film. But who knows? It could be good. I might like certain bits of it. Yeah. 
But the film I am really looking forward to, that I am definitely going to see when it comes out, is Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi? Yeah. I don't think I've seen that one uh, advertised. Not yeah. quite yet. Yeah, I think the marketing is really rounding up right now. and Because it comes out in a few weeks, I think. But it's... Yeah. I love... Again, I loved... I love Bruce Lee movies. I'm not a, again, I'm not a diehard fan, but I watched Into the Dragon, I think, with my friends a while back. And I loved it. And the four of Marvel doing their take on, you know, Kung Fu movies. Plus, they've, they've got the Ten Rings in them, who've been a prominent force of antagonists since the Iron Man films. It's nice to know they're going to be resolving that in a way. Ah. So that's going to be an interesting story. Again, I just hope it's done well. And... There's a lot of films coming up that I'm. we could spend all day talking about, but we've been talking for a while. My voice is almost on the brink at this point, <laughs> so I'm just going to say I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with Doctor Strange 2. Doctor Strange 2. The first Doctor Strange was actually pretty good. Yeah, and from what the title promises, Multiverse of Madness, and considering what's going on with the shows right now, especially What If and What Happened with Loki... I do, I'm curious to see how that's going to tie up together. Yeah. And Spider-Man 3, No Way Home. Again, I'm, I'm, I've always been a sucker for Spider-Man. Love the character. I, I've enjoyed his last two movies. And from what the rumours I've heard about, you know, possibly the story being about you know, multiverse as well. Yeah. I'm curious to see what how that would turn out. Again, for all we know, they could release the trailer <laughs> while I'm editing this. And we would know everything by then, so... Whatever, sorry. I'm slow with editing. But, yeah, it sounds promising, even though we've got no marketing for it just yet. Yeah. What about you? Is there any films coming up that you're looking forward to in their roster? Uh, Spider-Man 3, No Way Home. Uh, to be honest, Tom Holland's been doing a really good job as uh, the Spider-Man. He's my favourite Spider-Man, to be fair. Uh, I quite liked the last one. Where is it? Uh, far. Far oh. From Home, yeah. Um, I like that he's been exposed. Really, it's it's a new take on it. I I want to see how he's gonna uh, like react to that. What I say, I wonder how they're gonna play from that. Hmm. Uh, is he gonna be surrounded by people? Is he gonna have more people coming after him? Or um, to be honest, he could have both. Hmm. Uh, and I'm generally looking forward to see what they can do with that. Black Panther. Love the first film. I think I'm gonna love the second film, but. Uh, Will it? Did they film it all before? Uh, no, so they were still writing the script when the lead actor sadly passed away. Chad so Boseman. they are definitely going to have to rewrite the story to fit the rest of the cast. I believe I. I think someone said somewhere that the story is going to be first more about T'Challa's family and the people of Wakanda. Okay. So I'm. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe his sister becomes the Black Panther. Maybe maybe she, she becomes the, the, the comics. So. Um. I'm interested to see what happens. Uh, uh, Chadwick Boseman, good Black Panther. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, uh, f- cancer, and he acted, uh, and he wasn't exactly taking it easy with it as well. He's running around doing a lot of like stunts and all that. He was an amazing actor. Yeah. And to, to 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 soldier through all that. He, no wonder he became a legend. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah, it's such a shame we lost him. But he's up there with their other legend, Stanley. Yeah. Well, both of you. <laughs> I promise we'll try and make you proud. <laughs> Thor for Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder. The first Thor film. I know I've seen it. I can't quite remember it. Uh, no, I do remember it quite a bit. He's uh, quite a... Uh, what's the word? Boisterous. A rebel. Rebel. <laughs> uh, he's quite a rebellious god in the first film. Uh I quite like that, that he's matured from that. The second film, I can't really uh, remember it. Uh, th- the third film, I thought that was fucking good. Yeah. I really, really liked the third film. Uh, well, made it a bit more comical and all that, but I think they could have, uh, uh, you know, made it a little bit more serious as well. Mm. Um, I'll be interested to see what the fourth Thor, Thor film comes. Guardians of the Galaxy. Loved the first one. Second one was good. It was it was good. I'm not gonna call it great. It was good. Um, third one, I'm, I don't know what they could do with it. To be honest, uh, I'd, I'd like to see what they could do. But it, it literally they went from 
defeating a subordinate of Thanos to defeating the god of the universe. <laughs> now I don't know what they could. I imagine the story will be, will be more personal. Hmm. They'll, probably, they'll probably resolve the story like with a lot of the cast that we have. <clears throat> I'm curious to think to see if they'll keep some characters going forward because you know, they might make more films with a new team. Yes. But I feel like we're going to lose Drax, we're going to lose Peter Quill, we might lose Rocket. Or, or maybe they'll keep him because he's a CG character and it's easy to keep keep those characters around whether it's when you've got actors doing the roles they probably want us to do stuff that's on that role for a while. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like a lot of the cast that we know from this current, these last three phases, they're definitely going to be out the door in the next five years. I'm... I, I just, again, I hope it's a good story because James Gunn's he's done okay with the series so far, and yeah, Fantastic Four. Uh, I've not seen the recent ones. <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, I don't particularly want to watch the recent ones. I think the true Fantastic Four includes Jessica Alba and Chris Evans, <laughs> the old four. <laughs> Uh, yeah. When you look at the films that have been made with them so far, that is the most okay one. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say kindly, but yeah, I'm I'm ho- I'm curious. Again, I'm hopeful that this one's good because again, Shot in the Dark, the last films have been quite bad. So you think under Marvel, who've had such a good track record with Marvel characters, yeah, or oh, MCU, sorry. Hopefully, they'll be able to get this one right. I just again hope that they don't let. In real life politics and interests dictate the story and the characters or the casting or whatever. I just hope that it's a good story. Yeah, that's true to the spirit of the characters in the comics. And yeah, I mean, I'm I'm curious to see if they'll ever do the X Men again at some point. And I'm looking forward to Blade coming back again. Oh, I want Blade to come back again. But will they do uh, do it under Wesley Snipes still? Nah, they. I think they cast. Um, I'm forgetting his name, but he was in Luke Cage. For a few episodes, but I think it's Mahersha Ali. I apologise, I'm forgetting the name, but yeah, he's he's an he's a very good actor. He's been cast in the role, okay. So it's we're just waiting for them to decide on a release date, I guess. So right now they're figuring out the script. Okay, that'd be awesome. Hmm. I'd like to see what they could do with it. Yeah, that's the Marvel discussion. So this is just a question I had to you. But are there any books that you've read recently? That you would love to see adapted into film or TV. Jesus, I mean, as far as books go, I don't particularly read books. I know that's pretty bad. I should read books generally, but uh, I read manga. And uh, last thing I wanted, well, I say the last thing I wanted. I really wanted them to uh, make this spin-off manga into an anime, and they did. <laughs> so it's a work, Code Black. Quite serious, harsh. Anime, but pretty good. Uh, as far as books are concerned, though, um, there was this one book that I got really, really into. I'm not too sure uh, what happened to it. Um, well, it included um, detectives. People were sitting in a cafe. Uh, they were drinking and eating and everything, and you'd scan people. Like, scan people's uh, hostility levels he'd scan everyone they'd walk past blah 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 uh if they were hostile he'd get up talk to them uh he wouldn't arrest them but he'd like warn them um and then that was like his main job but his side job he was like a dealer or a businessman of sorts yeah. so he was a good and a bad guy okay so uh, he lived two lives, and uh, he had all these weird and wacky uh, sort of gadgets and weapons and all that. It was like a, a sonic bomb. Uh, he'd throw it, and it would create a noise so loud that everything would just shatter. Uh, your hearing would go where uh, everything's gone. Like air pistols, like air guns or something but nothing like these pressure air guns like you hold it and it completely blows I'm talking about like air bullets it pop holes into walls and all that sounds quite creative yeah uh, so he's a good and a bad guy and 
the last thing I remember about that book was um, he was f uh, flying off to America with his diamonds and he was on a plane and his uh, plane got attacked mid-air uh, but um, it was these uh, hovercrafts that were um, they, they completely disabled the uh, plane's engines but it was the uh, hovercrafts that were keeping it up with the enemy's hovercrafts and uh, last I read that uh, it was fighting them and he blew a hole in the plane. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sounds quite interesting. Can you not, you not, can you not, yeah, crying the words. Can you not remember the title? No, I can't. It was a long while ago. It was probably like five years ago. I, oh. I don't read. Yeah. Well, if, if anyone knows the premise of that story, by all means, let us know in the comments. A few years ago, I started reading this book series by Horowitz called The Power of Five. And the premise goes, it's about five kids. And the story kicks off with one of these kids who's called Matthew. And he's basically lived a difficult life. So he's, he's, he's shoplifting to try and keep things going for himself. Jeez. And he ends up getting caught by the cops. And so he ends up getting put into a special place to, to look after him. He, he basically gets taken in by this very elderly woman yeah. in this cottage in this village. And it seems he seems like it's going to be okay at first. But he gradually realizes something's going on with the village that they're acting quite strange around him. And he eventually finds out that they're part of a cult. And it's all connected to him and a select few of other children. And again, I can't say too much without spoiling it, but it was a fun read because it was a familiar setting for me because it actually takes place at the story, near the last half of the story, it actually moves to the London Natural History Museum. Ooh. And I've been there a few times in my life. And so it was quite fun reading a story that I could easily visualise. He's standing on those steps right now. And I, and I could stand on the exact same spot. And I read, I continued to read, I continued to read the series. I really loved the second book because it actually moved the action out of London and took it actually all the way to Brazil. And things get very interesting with that story. The, the third book has a completely new group of characters that we follow. But they're still part of the story. And it's sort of, it's sort of a prequel, but it's mainly still sort of going the direct driving the story forward. And the fourth and fifth ones, it's been a long time, but I remember not as enjoying them as much. I'm sorry? <laughs> sorry. Oh god my throat. But yeah, I remember not enjoying them as much. Ah. But they I remember I finished the series and I enjoyed it for the most part. And I'd say that if I could see Anything adapted into film, my choice, it would be this book series. I see. Because it's five books, so if it was a film series, it could be five films. But I would strongly advocate for it to be a TV series, because after watching Alex Ryder, the series, I think that must be the perfect format for it to work with. And I think for, a sh for the story that it tells, it starts off quite simple, just being in a, in a village. Yeah. And it then goes into more, you know, global storylines with different countries that could definitely it would lead, you would need more of a budget but yeah. I think it would definitely give them more room and breathing room to tell the story in episodic formats yeah and I think it'd be fun it'd be a nice story to tell and that's all I'll say about it awesome that's such a very investor <laughs> so that's a wrap on the podcast and yeah gotta say again thank you so much mate for coming back and joining me for the channel. Thank you for having me. I've had so much fun. It's... Oh, man. I, I don't get to talk about uh, some of the same sort of interests that I do uh, quite a lot. Like, uh, yeah, we've got uh, Hawk and other friends that I hang around with and uh, all that, but they have their own other interests, just like me and you. Mm. But sometimes you just find opportunities like this yeah. and uh, we tend to put them together. And this is what we can do. It makes for a fun listen, and again, this is this is this will be the final plot will be edited down, so you, we don't we don't ramble forever. Yeah. But for, for when you're talking for two hours straight, it can be it can be exhausting. But I'm not gonna lie, it's been fun as hell. So good, so good. I've I've enjoyed my time a lot here. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, thank you for coming back. Ah, well. So it's great to have a friend on again. It's great to have you on again. Thank you very much. I've, ah, so good. First podcast. Yeah. After, what, two years? Two, or? Two, almost two years. Jeez. 
And um, I'd like to also take this occasion to celebrate the end of the channel itself, because hopefully by the time this episode goes up, or well, we already passed the day in general, but on 25th of August this year, the channel turned three years. Nice. So I'd like to take this moment to thank not only you for joining me on this special occasion, well, it's past the special occasion technically, but regardless, thank you for being here for this occasion. But thank you everyone else also again for keeping with us for three years. Yeah, but we, if it weren't for you guys, uh, we probably wouldn't be doing this or something. Uh, generally, he's the mastermind here. <laughs> thank Kobe for all the hard work. It's just a hobby for fun at, this, at the end of the day. I'm just happy to know that people enjoy listening to us. And that... I think that is what's part, part, part of the fun of this. It's fun having normal conversations with friends. It just happens to be recorded. And, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we've been able to do this for this long. And we've got we've got some more coming in the future. There will we'll, definitely be more. Yeah, we'll definitely have you back for a few more episodes. Nice. So thank you for everyone for sticking with us. And we hope you enjoy what's to come. All right. Thank you. So thanks again, mate. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Okay. Ow. <laughs> you okay there? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh god, that's that's, that's going in the outtake. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs>